me make sure before we get started. Okay, it's about the Lord's Vader. Yeah, I do have vampires. Look at in. I'm gonna let Crystal do her thing. Oh, we like live live now? Yes. <gasps> Ooh. Um let me pull my mic to me <laughs> before I start recording. Okay. What am I doing? If you don't want to say anything before we get oh, um, recording. I don't know. This isn't good vampire stuff. So wait, 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 wait. We can have it up there. We can have rapist up at the top corner. But we can't have it in our title. That's spelled right, right. Why does that look wrong to me? I don't know. This guy's weird. I don't Anyways. even know anything about it. Yeah, I went to make our title for this stream, and it said if I did it, we would be banned. <laughs> so, I prefer not to get banned. <laughs> no, So, thank I changed you. it to let's talk about vampires and true crime. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I got, okay, I'll do our little spill. Um, so. Oh, I can do the spill. Is that what you wanted me to do? Yeah. Oh, and That okay. way we can, I can. Then we'll get to the re oh, recording. Spiel time. <laughs> okay, so I forgot that we were recording this that fast. Um, so this is a recorded episode for that we're going to actually publish and put out. So you're hearing it first if you're watching. You're on um, Twitch, yeah. Yes. So if you you know, ask any questions or say anything in the comments and we don't respond, that is why I'll try to keep it updated throughout the chat too. Um, if anyone jumps in, says anything, that is why we are not communicating with you. But if you want to hang out afterwards or, you know, come back afterwards and hang out, we will be here for a little bit. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm presenting this case. We just recorded uh, Crystal's case for this Sunday, actually. And my, this one that we're recording now is coming out the following Sunday, so... I'll be presenting, so I promise I'm not ignoring you guys. Actually, this one is the Halloween episode. Oh, that's right. That's right. We're ahead. That's right. Yeah, because we're, we're actually, Twitch stream next We're time. actually ahead, y'all. Oh, my God. It doesn't happen that. very often. I know. It's but about we're, time. Trying, we're really trying to get ahead. That way we can kind of, like, somewhat take a break for the holidays. Oh, my God. I just realized <laughs> the next case I have to do is our Twitch stream on the 12th. That's how much time I have. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're actually we're like so getting ahead. our acts together, y'all. Like we're Oh, I feel so great about just myself. Just cuz the holidays are coming up and I told Crystal, do we want to like I know it'll be hectic now cuz we've both been doing tons of research, but if we get ahead now, we can actually do fun stuff for the holidays. I already have mm -hmm. a ton of baking stuff planned. I told Crystal I'm cracking out my KitchenAid mixer literally after we finish this to make cookies for tomorrow. And I'm excited for that. I bought a crap ton of flour the other day because I want to make, have you seen that recipe for the flour, for the bread, and you like put the kitchen baker's twine around it and it kind of makes it look like a pumpkin? Yes. I so want to make so. that. Yes. Because I think it's cute. But anyway. But yeah, so if me and Crystal are, you know, if I'm not answering you when I'm talking, that's because we're recording on our Audacity, which is what we use to record our podcast. But this was requested. We've done this a couple of times, but we're kind of just saying this for maybe somebody's coming in that's new. Or I upload all these to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you don't understand what's going on, we're actually recording for the podcast for our weekly episodes that go up every Sunday on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and like 5 million other platforms that we have. Um, but we're just doing it for y'all because some of y'all requested that y'all wanted to see us record. And Twitch is an awesome way to do that because we can, you know, talk to all of our people on Twitch and then it goes up on YouTube and all the people make fun of us on YouTube. So, yeah. Yep, and it's so much fun. That's mm -hmm. how it goes. But, yeah, we're going to get started. Um, I'll kind of give you all a little breakdown before I start, and I can't answer any questions or anything till after. Um, first off, that's what we're talking about, the vampire rapist. Please don't ban us, Twitch. Just, <laughs> Please. We're talking about actual events. I know you didn't want me to put it in the title. I don't, I'm a little confused on how I can say killer and all these other words, but anyways. You know, it doesn't matter. It happens. It's a thing that happens to people, but um, yeah, we're talking about John Brennan Crutchley, 
Um, so yeah, that is the title he was given. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get on into it, y'all. So yeah. Hope y'all are having a good night. You're having a good week. It's almost the weekend. Give me a second. There's like five million things we have to pull up when we do this. <laughs> oh, and a train. And a train. Hello. Welcome to living. Literally, my house is like right next to the railroad track. I'm surprised it's not louder. At least we missed the taps being played. Yeah. Oh, it's at what time? Oh, yeah, we might. It's at 9 o'clock. Mm hmm. Alrighty. Here we go, y'all. Can you see it? Do you want me to? I can see it. I can see everything. Oh, wait. I meant to have this open, too. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start it. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Bayou Chronicles. We are your host. I'm Crystal. And I'm Bethany. And it is officially spooky day. <laughs> we hope you have a fun but super, super safe Halloween day slash night. Whether you're going out or staying home, if you're like Bethany and I, you've probably already gone through bowls and bowls of Halloween candy. I know ours is getting very empty and I need another I need to fill it up again. Um, a quick thank you to everyone who showed up to our Twitch stream last Sunday. We always have fun, especially since we got to dress up and talk about Ouija boards. Um, I'm excited that we've been able to stream a little bit more and hang out with everyone. It is always fun. Um, today's episode is going to be strange as usual, but it also somewhat fits the Halloween spooky theme. So, um, just to give everybody a quick recap of everything it's been, if you haven't haven't heard the spiel lately we do have our newest patreon up and running so now that we have patreon you can support us a little bit oh, um we've already talked about adding even more things to it yes it's <laughs> gonna be never ending so as of right now we have a three dollar tier that gets you a shout out at the beginning or end or wherever you well, i get not say you won't but if there's a crap ton of y'all we're not gonna do it at the beginning and take like 12 minutes up but Either way, you get a shout out on the episode and yeah, you get Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Sorry, I need some tea. <laughs> you also get to um, submit a case to our ever-growing list once a month and you get to be added to our close friends list on Instagram, which means you'll get crazy pictures of the two of us <laughs> because I'm going to make Bethany oh, man. send really crazy pictures and talk to the the close friends of ours okay. um we also are gonna have or we have a ten dollar um level which gives you everything on the three dollar level plus you get to actually pick a case for us to do the following month and what else do they get to do oh you get access to our script notes so mm -hmm. you can see all the crazy stuff that we put in there as well um, and then everything else. And we have before. all of them, like, from the beginning, like, yes. the past year. And they're they're crazy fun. There's lots of little snippets in it. Um, we also do have a $5 tier for advertising right now. So if you are a business owner or have a small business, you can submit um, that to us. We'll give you the ad space for one ad um, a month. Obviously, you could pay for more if you wanted, but you do have that option, and that's a pretty good deal if you have a small business and just want some advertising. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that is what we got right now. If you have any suggestions, if you want me to add another tier, like, just let me know. I'm totally open if you think something that you get from it's stupid or if you want something better. Again, just let us know. But I think that is about it when it comes to the patreon and the business as usual um <laughs> next week's episode should be should be an episode with bethany and zach should be yes. fun yes um uh, we thought we had a topic men are very undecisive i i don't know like he has this like idea where like it's his first time officially being 
because Tyler has made some guest appearances with Crystal, and they went amazing. Like, literally, <laughs> their, what was the one? The Malaysian. The Malaysian airline. fight. That yeah. was our number one. It's still to this day the number one downloaded in the first 24 hours. Not episode. streams, downloaded. downloaded. So, yeah. like, people, like, really wanted to take this on the go with them. Like, the first 24 hours, I think it had 42 downloads. And, I mean, we have some episodes that it takes, like, a week for it to get to 40 downloads. So, in the first 24 hours, that's awesome. So, he wants his first episode on the podcast with me to be, like, amazing. I don't think he wants to, like, like top Tyler. He don't. He won't. It's a competition. Probably. It is Probably. 100% a competition. But he just wants his to be, like, a really good, I don't know, episode. Because yeah. that's just him. Yes. He's a perfectionist, literally just like Crystal. They're the same. So, yes. But, yeah. All right. Okay, let's get on in. Um, Today's episode is a wild one. It's a topic that's been discussed in a ton of movies, comic books, and even your worst nightmares. Because I'm, I don't know if anybody's like me. I've definitely dreamed about vampires at some point, whether it was a regular dream or a nightmare. Um, The talk of vampires. We all know Crystal loves vampires. Yep. One of her favorite movies is Twilight. Yep. We're talking about a different type of vampire today, though. I'm so sorry. We're not talking about glittery Edward. I'm so sorry. I would love to talk about Carlisle, though. I'm definitely team Carlisle. If anybody could be anything, I would probably be whatever it would take for me to be next to Carlisle Cullen every single day for the rest of my life. Yes, but we're we're just talking about... I just had to... Include that to pick fun at Crystal because I know how much she loves Twilight. I love Twilight too. I've watched it. It's just look. I I was that person who could not decide what was better, Twilight or Harry Potter. I have watched them both equally more times than I could count. I've, I mean, I've stood in line for Harry Potter books, and I've stood in line for Twilight books. So I was a lonely middle schooler. So Twilight was Twilight books for everything when they came out. So yes. But we're going to talk about a different one today. Not as cool, not as nice. Definitely not as nice. (laughs) Definitely not as handsome. Oh, God, Um, no. But we are talking about the vampire rapist John Brennan Crutchley, born October 1st, 1946. I guess by coincidence he was born in October when we were talking about him. It just seemed to add up. This show, this episode was actually suggested by my mom. So... I had actually never heard of this guy until my mom uh, texted me and um, she was like, you guys should do this and, you know, Halloween's coming up and, you know, leave it to my mom to find all the weirdos in Florida. Um, However, the story doesn't start in Florida. I don't want people to get confused. We're going to kind of bounce around the East Coast, basically, starting from the top all the way to the bottom. And I mean, like, bottom, South Florida interesting place (laughs) um it always is yeah but john actually spent most of his childhood and teenage years in pittsburgh pennsylvania um he was kind of an outcast that sounds like every beginning story to a serial killer that sounds so cliche like it's like oh he was a loner he had no friends no girlfriends you know keep small pets away from him you know typical but sadly it was it's true for most and especially for um john and most are alone and don't have any friends so it's it's true and his school picture is actually pretty cute i hate to admit it i know me and crystal were just poking fun at you know he's not the best looker later in life um but some of the school pictures i looked up of him he was probably like 10 11 12 um, and he actually had the same glasses on as me, which kind of creeped me out because I have my grass, my I have them on now. <laughs> and when I'm doing my research, obviously, because I can't see. Um, but it's crazy to look at these innocent pictures, um, knowing later in their lives they end up doing horrible, unspeakable things to other people, and it's just crazy that this picture can look so innocent. innocent. Yeah, it's weird, but it happens. So. Um, but, yeah, I, I actually couldn't find much about his family. And even before we hit our, you know, our going live and stuff and stuff like that and recording, 
uh, we did some extra research and I couldn't find a lot and I was literally driving myself crazy and I kept telling Crystal I am man this was a hard episode to research and it was requested so I wanted to do it and I wanted it to be a good episode um but yeah we'll talk about that a little bit but in the beginning I was like I can barely find anything on this dude's family and why I wanted to find it is because later on I'm kind of jumping back and forth there were accusations of abuse inside his household but the thing was is like I could never like he had other siblings and like none of the other siblings like attested to this um and they basically said that he made it all up but like also I know he's a bad person but who are we to say he didn't get abused yeah that's kind of a tricky thing but he made claims that his mother and used to force him to wear girls clothes because he had an older sibling and apparently she had some kind of surgery right before he was born and she actually died during the surgery oh my gosh so yeah i think she was like seven or eight that's so it was kind of traumatic for his mom as it should be and he was a boy and then he had another sibling that ended up being another boy so, so his mom lost her only girl, basically. Basically, it made him wear girls' clothes until the age of six. And he also claimed that his father would burn the ends of his fingertips with a curling iron. Oh, Like an old school one, because he was born in 46. But, you know, the other sibling, you know, basically said it didn't really happen. And his mom said that he liked to make up these fantasy stories of bad stuff happening to him it was like he wanted bad stuff does that make sense yeah like a masochist like Mm -hmm. they like bad stuff like that but yeah i'm just i'm adding it to add it because it was in the research but i want you guys to know it was never proven but like i was just talking to crystal you can't who are we to say yeah you can't say if that happened or not but yeah it's in there and you know Often people would say it was just an excuse for his behavior because he wasn't the greatest kid. He was very intelligent, but he got in trouble a lot, Aww. especially at home. And Why do I always feel bad for these people at the beginning? It's in the beginning, y'all. Like, I don't mean, I guess it's the way I write. Like, I don't know. You do. You pull on the heartstrings every time. I'm sorry, but I promise you, you're not going to like this dude here soon. Like, for, pretty soon. Um, but... So, like, getting in trouble often, he spent a lot of time, like, basically, like, grounded stuff and had to stay home. But he was a loner, so I don't think he minded that much. (laughs) So, he would come home after school, and he found out that he was good with electronics because their family had a radio. Um, Gotta remember, this was 1946. Not Not a lot of homes had TVs, and if they did, it was very, very expensive. So, they had a radio. Oh, I love that. And um, he actually fixed it for his dad. Oh, that's cool. And he had never been taught. Like, he did it solely by, like, he took it apart and then put it back together solely by memory. That's always impressed me. Yeah. So, he kind of, like, started a little side hustle. And this is actually how he saved up for college. Oh, that's cool. Because he would fix people's, like, stereo systems, radios, stuff in their cars, anything electrical. So, he's actually very intelligent, and he had a very IQ, and this is a creepy fact. His IQ was almost identical to Ted Bundy. I don't know why they kept including that. In case, because, I guess maybe, because Ted Bundy was incredibly smart, he was incredibly and he's incredibly smart. smart. I don't know. But after graduating high school, he goes on to get a bachelor's degree in physics. This was in Defiance College in Ohio. Um, and then he went on to get a master's degree in engineering from George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Um, hmm, I wonder where that's at. I no included it, even though I said George Washington. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah. And he actually got married while he was in college, like the, the last year of getting his master's degree in 19. 19- mm-hmm. So he got married in 1969, and in 1970 is when he finished his master's degree. Oh, wow. So, um, there's not a lot of information. Um, there wasn't much I could find on him and his, I found out, um, that his first, I told Crystal, I had to basically, I wouldn't say hack, please don't hunt me down. Um, (laughs) but I somehow finagled my way into the Pennsylvania Library of Records, (laughs) dear God. Um, and I found an old newspaper clipping. I don't know why they're 
hiding his information like it's like Fort Knox. But I found out newspaper clipping, and that's how I found out his. I'll go ahead. I'm gonna give it away. First wife, name is Maud, <laughs> which is a horrible <laughs> name. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. But yeah, I couldn't find much info on her. I found her parents' name and her name, and they did. Um, back then, it was pretty common to have engagement announcements and like birth announcements in the newspaper, mm-hmm. and that's the only reason I found her name and stuff. But yeah, there wasn't much. I couldn't do my, like, typical YouTube searches and stuff. There were some videos, but it was mainly other podcasters, and not that I'm downing them, but I want actual information from, like, actual sources. That is nothing. I don't want people to, like, watch our videos and think they, like, 100% have to trust our information. Me and Crystal both believe in do your own research and, like, fact check, and please let us know. So, like, I was kind of like, mm, I need to dig deep. And that's when I got into the Pennsylvania Library Records. Anyways, moving on. Um, don't do that. Hopefully I don't get any emails. Uh, but, yeah, there is a book you can buy on Amazon, though. Um, Crystal actually looked it up, too. It's The Vampire Next Door. Um, and it's basically all about John Brennan um crutchley it's 15.99 on amazon but if you have an iphone or like an ipad if you go onto the books app on your phone it's actually 7.99 so you should save a couple bucks well the kindle version was like 7.99 the kindle, too. there's also a kindle version and you can get the audiobook the audiobook's really heckin expensive though I don't know yeah why. i don't i don't like audiobooks why though audiobook i don't know more? i accidentally forgot about my audible subscription because i got a free one one time and, like, I have, like, four credits that I could use, and I haven't decided what I'm going to use them for, but weird. Mm-hmm. Also, check out your local library. Yeah, your local library. I checked library. the library app for me, and it didn't have it, but that doesn't mean that yours won't have it. So, de- go Libby. But, yeah. Anyways. Um, I'm going to add this because of his first wife. Um, it kind of talks really bad about her, I'm going to be honest, and all the sources and, and research. Oh, that's sad. Um, because it said that he liked, John liked women that were easy to control, and... He wouldn't like me. Were submi- <laughs> you would not. <laughs> and, and that were submissive, and that was basically, <laughs> that was Maud. Oh, Lord, I don't know, she's... That would not be me. Oh, I'm just thinking about how long I would have survived in that. I'd just survived approximately two days. Anyways, that's the lovely way that he described his first wife, Maud. She was submissive and easy to control. Needless to say, the marriage didn't last long um, because she finally, you know, got tired of it. And it was barely a year when they divorced. It was like mm, 10-ish months. Oh, my God. That's a um, fast marriage. You could, I guess you could consider her lucky, though. Yeah. I guess you could, because it's about to get intense. Um, But John kind of liked to bounce around um, after, you know, he got divorced and stuff. He didn't really have to stay in one area because he was a bachelor now. Um, Because he had a job in Pennsylvania, and he just kind of kept jumping around. And he took a job in uh, Kokomo. (gasps) Like the song. song. Go down to Kokomo. Anyways, if you don't know Beach Boys, you're missing out. But he went to Kokomo, Indiana, basically doing all the electrical work for Delco Electronics. And I will say before that, he was in Ohio. Why does Delco Electronics sound familiar? I don't know. He he basically works for a, a big... We'll talk about it more. But, yes, you, it's probably something we've seen before. Okay. I didn't research too much into it. Um, huh. But, yeah, think of all the big, flashy, very important ones that have been around a long time that probably listen to all of our conversations. He probably worked for them. Oh, cool. But he actually stayed in Indiana the longest. Like, he went from, like, Pennsylvania to Virginia to Ohio to Indiana. Like, he was bouncing all around the East Coast. Um, but he stayed in Indiana the longest. And an investigation at his job actually opened because a lot of expensive equipment was going missing from the company and they couldn't figure out where it was going. Hmm, I wonder who it was. Who was the main person that works on... I feel like this was a no-brainer. Like, he was literally the head person over all the electronics. So, like, if stuff goes missing, wouldn't you go to the boss? But No, I would think you would. I digress. This is the 70s. Um, John was their main suspect, 
naturally. But he had already packed up. Like I said, this dude liked it. It was like, you know, when the slightest thing happened, he just packed up and... So he just got the hell out of Dodge, yeah, basically. So before, basically, before they could investigate him, he packed up and moved to Fairfax County, Virginia. He I just, know where that is. All up and down. So, yeah. Actually, he's going like... Because Pennsylvania is like up there, kind of ish. Yeah, it's below New York. And then he's like Indiana, which is like to the side. Virginia is below below, Pennsylvania, right by the east, like right by the water, basically. So yeah, he's just all over the place. Um, we had to do a little hand gesture. I know you guys (laughs) listening can't see it, but yeah. Anyways. So he kind of got out, you know, not suspicious at all, moving after your company. Just, I'm talking millions of dollars. That's a lot of stuff in this, what was this, the 70s? Yes. That's a lot. That's probably a dramatic number, but when you're talking about a big electrical company that, like, does the electric stuff for the entire country, I'm assuming it had to be really heckin' expensive. But, yeah. yeah. And when he moved to Fairfax County, Virginia, he started working for some pretty well-known tech tech companies in Washington, D.C. Um, I didn't include them because I'm going to be 100% honest. I've never heard of these places, but apparently they're really important and famous. Um, <laughs> but basically all the important, they probably do, like, all the stuff for the White House is what I was assuming. Okay. He worked for them. He did, like, their tech work. If anything broke, he would fix it. Okay. So, I see that. And he had that. high clearance, so they never said that, but I just came to the assumption he probably did stuff. Well, they did mention he does stuff for the Pentagon. So. Oh, he's fancy. Yeah, so you got to have pretty high security clearance to do stuff at the Pentagon. Um, I kind of felt like Crystal would like researching this ep- for this episode because there's a lot of books. There's several books out there, and y'all know she loves, like, I can't tell you how many books she's bought. For the podcast, she if, if I can't can. if I can't buy it, I find it on Libby, and if I can't find it on Libby, I resort to buying Mind it. it. And if I can't do any of that because I don't feel like spending eight thousand dollars to buy it, and it's not on Libby, then I just put in the thing into Google and put in free PDF and find where someone scanned in every single page and then read it that way. She would loved it. I'm more than likely going to buy this book, The Vampire Next Door, because it's the most well-known, and he's, like, a well-known, like, true crime author, but, like, you guys know how much I love visual stuff, and I got, I was telling Crystal, I was, like, hunched over the computer late at night for, like, the past two weeks. There were pictures. Two or three weeks. There are pictures, but there was a lot, and, like, some of the documents I found were redacted, and some of it was close to the public. But I'm assuming that's because, you know, he did have security clearance, and they probably couldn't let us in on, like, because they found stuff at his home, like, later on. We'll talk about it, but. Um, well, maybe it'll be, like, our other case notes right here. It's just, like, r- like stuff that's just, like, not necessarily classified, classified. but, like, need to know kind Me- of thing. Yeah, it could be. Um, I actually found myself scrolling through Reddit. Oh, look I at feel you. Like, yeah. Yeah, I didn't tell Crystal. I was waiting for the, for <laughs> us to record because y'all, Crystal is a Reddit junkie. Like, she's been on it forever. She's always sending me things, and I I I got on Reddit not too long ago, and I had actually seen where she commented on something. I was like, that's so Crystal. It was something about I don't even remember. Now. I don't know. I've been on Reddit since like oh lord two thousand something early mid two thousands. <laughs> It was, I mean, I got some information for this episode from Reddit, but it was mainly a bunch of people just making, like, theories on yeah. stuff and, like, why the stuff was so secret and how you could barely find any information. And some of the na- some of the people, I guess, didn't want to be, they didn't want their information. Like, any, you know, survivor, they don't have to release their name to us. Like, no. they want to live in privacy, but, yeah. Reddit is an interesting place, but... You know, it's not for the faint of heart either. Yeah, I did find, you know, like I said, the Pennsylvania Library online records and newspaper articles and clippings from the 60s and 70s. Um, It was actually when John moved to Virginia and began working in D.C. area that teenage girls started going missing. And Mm -hmm. I will say, take note. Everywhere that he's lived, like we said, Indiana, Ohio, Washington, D.C., Virginia, 
Um, that's basically all the same area right there. That's all yeah. very close together. Ooh. Young teenage girls or like young like early twenties, late twenties girls were going missing every place that he lived. That could be pure coincidence. But take note of that because we're gonna talk about it more. Um and he also remarried. So, you know, he divorced Maud in nineteen seventy. Yeah. Go Maud. Actually had a baby. He had a son. Not with Maud. No, the second one. Mystery woman. They had a son. Um I'm I'm really gonna buy this book because like the more we record this and we talk about this, I just got I'm it's probably gonna be downloaded on my phone tonight. <laughs> so, um, like I said, I found the newspaper clipping, and that's when I you know kind of found out you know they were married in Pennsylvania. Her parents were actually I guess well known um, in Pennsylvania. I'm assuming she was hmm. a rich girl. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, was a rich girl. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> nothing on the second wife, nothing on the son. So that's why I'm pretty sure they just want their names to be kept. Now, out. okay. So before we started this, I downloaded a sample of the book, and at the beginning, it did say that several people's name in the book were cha- was, yeah. was changed or yeah. hidden because they didn't want to be known. So I'm assuming that's why you could never find out the wife's yeah. and son's name because like. It's kind of like what we always say, like, their kids don't the matter. Mom, they don't, we don't ever talk about the ch- Like, we'll mention that they had children because it's part of their And then we'll say their, their names if, like, they're important to the story. Yeah. But, like, if it does not matter, why we don't bring it up? It. And I feel yeah. like this is, like, an exact, not exaggeration, an example of this. Like, it doesn't matter, mm-hmm. so why, why do should we, we mention it? it? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Anyways. Okay, so this is when things start to get weird. Um, back in the late 70s, John had been interviewed due to being connected to several missing women's in Fairfax County, Virginia. Um, one, e- one even living in his neighborhood. It was basically a woman that he somewhat dated. They mainly, you know, did the do together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about. If not, Google it. Um, <laughs> we said that a lot. <laughs> We're just not going into that. Um... And she basically just went missing, and nobody could find her, and he was the last person she had talked to. Um, So they always kind of felt like he was connected, but there was literally no evidence to link him. Um, And they actually did end up finding um, the bones of her body um, not too far from her home. I want to say like a year later. Okay. And they still didn't have any evidence to connect him to it. But still to this day, they're pretty sure that he murdered this woman. Like, in her home, drug her out, and he literally lived, like, across the street from her. That's how they, like, met. (laughs) And they didn't have proof? They didn't have any evidence. Like, nothing inside her home, nothing on the bot, well, the bones. Well, I mean, he's so smart, so maybe is that how he got rid, like, got away with it, maybe? We talk about it more, but I promise you, you're going to be frustrated. Of it. Like, a Dang lot of people it. are going to be frustrated. I hate these. I hate I when I leave these so angry at the world. I know, but it was requested, and we got to give the people what they want, even though they're going to be mad okay. at the end. Okay. But fast forward to November 1985. Um, that happened in, like, 78, 79. Okay. So, we're fast-forwarding to November 1985. Um, John and his family had moved down to South Florida. Remember, they were living in, uh, Virginia, Washington at that time. So, they moved down to South Florida due to him now working for NASA. Ooh. Wow. We got a, a masochist psychopath <laughs> working for NASA. Who would have thought? And other classified corporations, that's the weird part. It said he also worked for other companies, but they couldn't specifically tell you. So they can tell you he works at NASA, but they can't tell you, tell us what the other companies. But I guess not that it really matters. Um, But one night close to Thanksgiving, a girl was seen um, stumbling at first on the road in uh, Brevard County, Florida, which is just like down south. Basically, like, uh, think Cocoa Beach area. That's basically the little town right outside of Cape Canaveral, which is, if you don't know Cape Canaveral, that's actually where, um, part of NAS, yeah, where they launch. Oh, yeah. Not that anyone could see you can't what see this it. was. But Man, words are hard. The yeah. rocket ship. There we go. Yeah, that's one of the areas where they launch. So, yeah, Cape Canaveral out there and part of. That, anyways, moving on. Words are hard. 
she was stumbling down the road completely naked and her hands were handcuffed and her feet were handcuffed so it's amazing that she was on kind of walking at first it, and then it kind of went from stumbling to crawling on all fours on the side of the road because she got you know she just got exhausted and she was weak um, and the driver that ended up stopping to help her actually said cars just kept driving past her how sad is that you see this young girl handcuffed bloody dirty naked crawling on the side of the road and you don't immediately stop no because it's probably they thought where it's like that's someone Some, else's problem yeah. which is incredibly rude, rude but. but anyways um i would immediately stop i know crystal would but he ended up you know pulling off from the side of the road so thank goodness for this man and calling an ambulance for her and gave the police a description of where she might have escaped from because she kind of before they took her away on the ambulance she kind of like let him know like an area of where she had escaped from um, and I mean, this was just a normal Florida suburb, not like a super nice suburb. I don't mean that to sound rude. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you get what I'm putting down. And here's this handcuffed bleeding girl crawling down the side of the road. N- not a normal Thanksgiving afternoon, but. Anyway. Can you imagine if you were driving and that's what you saw? That would traumatize me, but also think about. Her. she's vulnerable she's naked like no clothes hands cup handcuffed and her feet handcuffed together that's so sad having to crawl like imagine how that hurt her knees because oh, it was asphalt God. and like the dirt and stuff mm. but yeah um so they basically get her to the hospital and the hospital will report back to the police that she was missing almost half of her body's blood uh, contents. Oh my gosh. So like half of her blood was drained from her body. Jeez. And I say drained because it wasn't like, you know, a wound or something. Well, it was a wound, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like a gash, gash. or something. Yeah. Um, and several small puncture wounds uh, across her neck. Mm. So like just, you know, vampire. I'm air quoting here. Um, but, yeah, obviously the police are like, okay, we've got to ask her questions. We've got a, a real crazy person out there on the loose. You know, he's draining blood out of people. And she said she had been hitchhiking. And this is when you do your own research. You're going to literally see her described as hitchhiking woman or California woman because she's originally from California and basically hitchhiked her way to Florida, which is terrifying to think about. But, yeah, that's when me and Crystal found out that she chose to have her name kind of hidden. So, yeah, she was hitchhiking, and she said a man offered her a ride to where she was going. But she said she immediately felt a bad vibe from him. It was very creepy, didn't talk a lot. And when she was in the car, he didn't listen to her. Like, he, she wanted to go a certain area, and he just kind of, like, stopped talking to her and drove and ended up driving to his house and parked in his driveway and she kind of refused to get out so he climbed into the back seat and choked her until she passed out oh my god yeah this is why i mean a lot of people hitchhike back then but you you gotta be you really gotta be careful um so she's unconscious she wakes up naked in a kitchen like basically on the kitchen think of how do i describe it best way like a big island you know like a big kitchen island she's laying on top of the kitchen island strapped down to it um and she's surrounded by bright lights and a video camera it was probably like those industrial lights that people use like when they're doing construction like remodel on their home so she said there's just a bunch of bright lights around her and a video camera probably a you know, the big old school video cameras, because this was the 80s. And he started this ritual. She constantly described it as a ritual. It was a really weird way to describe it. But the ritual was he would come in, you know, he would sexually assault her, which is very terrible. And then he would take a needle and make two small holes on her neck and, like, drain, like, like vials and vials of blood and then put it like in this cup 
Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on. Oh, I'm about to like hurt myself because I I got I had to get in a new position. <laughs> so like he, these needles, are they like? I don't know why I'm asking all these questions. Are they like like oh I'm getting a shot needles or are they like, like I'm getting a lumbar puncture needle or are they like a knitting needle? Like hypodermic needles, like ones that if you're getting your blood drawn. Um, I'm assuming he would. I'll talk about where I think he gets them from, but okay. we'll get there. We'll talk so, okay. about it. So, second part, follow-up to the question. Um, how would he drain said blood? Like, is he, like, sucking on that spot and, like, doing it? Or is he just, like, no, he's, pressing on it and, like... He's getting the blood out of her. He's going in her, uh... What rotted? You, yeah, Zach would be mad at me for not knowing that. And, like, just, like, like you know how, like, when they, like, get syringe, blood vials? Syringe, like, when you get drain yeah, your blood? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he's okay. basically filling this, like, bucket cup or whatever. It wasn't very specific. Who cares? This is very creepy anyway. Don't tell me he drinks it. Oh, we'll get there. Um, oh, that means And yes. this hitchhiking woman, I hate describing her like that. Let's give her a name. Julie. Julie. We're respecting her wishes. She wanted her name out. But Julie, okay, <laughs> this is, I feel weird, even weirder, but Julie, <laughs> Julie said he did this ritual, that's even weirder saying, several times, so like two times. And I'm talking a lot of blood each time. Yeah. So did it first time, and then he would come back in, sexually assault her, and then drain her blood again. Anyway. Okay, okay. I know this is 1985, but how the first thing I was like, you know what was spreading around in the 80s? AIDS! Is that right? Yes. Oh. But like, <sighs> ugh, I'm making terrible faces right now. That's nothing to people that have it, but the thought, I don't know. I don't want to get too much into it. I don't want to be rude and disrespectful, but like, I... Even today, I don't think about going around and drinking people's blood, and you don't know what's in their blood, and you don't know what they're doing. But anyways, after doing this ritual two times, like Julia said, he locked her in his bathroom, which is like, you know, you just drain this woman of almost all her blood. Let me just throw, throw her in the bathtub. He throws her in the bathtub, handcuffed. And um, that's crazy that... This was, like, I don't think people realize, this was his house. Like, this is the house that he lived in with his family, like, with his wife and son. And he's doing this to this woman. Right? And then That's he, just like Jerry Brudos. It's just like Jerry Brudos. Yeah. Because they were, this is, because they were away visiting family for Thanksgiving. They went to her, they went up north to her parents for Thanksgiving. Which is weird. Why didn't he go? Maybe he had to work. I don't know. I'm reading too much into this. But, yeah, the hospital said, um, oh, because I'm, I'm skipping it. So, he leaves for some reason. They don't say why, and he never, like, tells why. And she escapes out the bathroom window. Imagine how she's got her hands handcuffed, feet handcuffed. Do you think you could do that? Absolutely not. I don't think I could. So well, I mean, when you have the I mean, power, Yeah, when you have a will, and there's but a way. And... she has half of her blood drained out of her. Imagine how weak she is. That's just amazing. I don't know. Julia did the dang thing. But, yeah, the hospital said John could have easily drained all the blood out of her if, like, he had done it a third time. If she hadn't escaped. Like, that third time would have killed her. That would have been too much uh, blood out of the body. Wow. So, that was probably his plan all along. Yeah. Was to slowly drain her yeah. over time. Yeah. But... The police were able to obtain a search warrant from the Crutchley home, or for the Crutchley home, I should say, um, fairly quickly because, I mean, she escaped from their home. She described the home. She described what he looked like, so it wasn't that hard to get a warrant. Good job, um, girlfriend. It was pretty fast. Like, it was yeah. that night. Like, she was found, and they took her to the hospital, and then that night at 2.30 a.m., they searched his home. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks to the guy that rescued her. He gave such a description of where she had come from, they were able to find the house. Wow. And they searched it and found that it was his home and blah, blah, blah. So they did find the video camera because, remember, she said she saw lights and he filmed everything. Um, so they did find the video camera, but the tape inside had been messed with. I mean, she escaped, so he probably knew mm -hmm. he was going to get caught, so he probably... 
Um, it was conveniently missing, you know, the assault and the, and the blood. Of course. Of it course. had everything, but, like, what... What, what? That's just her naked on the kitchen counter, then, basically. Which is still very weird. Weird, and just... Anyways, but... I, I will never understand how people do these things to people, because I physically cannot imagine what it's I like can't. to undress someone, mm-hmm. lay them on a kitchen counter, and drain them of blood. What is going through your head? A bunch of weirdos. So, searching the home further is when the police realize they have seriously strum- stumbled across uh, something i mean what's worse than a man drinking a woman's blood i feel like that would have been my first thing that we might have a you know a sicko here but oh yeah, yeah. it's what i'm about to tell you that they are like wow this is weird not the blood drinking oh okay okay I'm, I'm ready anyways there were debit and credit cards everywhere like an alarming amount i'm talking stacks and if there's a stack, and that stacks, plural, like several stacks of debit and credit cards, um, because credit cards are relatively yeah thin. So if there's like a big stack, a stack of them, that's like that's a lot, a lot of, of cards. A lot of cards. You notice how I said people and not John's credit cards? Oh. They don't really go into much detail, but I think that's because they were trying to protect the identity of these people. Um, but yeah. They found also a collection of women's jewelry, like a bunch of different styles and stuff, in his closet. But I didn't find that that weird because he did have a wife. So what, yeah. if, it, what if it was his wife's jewelry or, like, family's that, jewelry? Unless it was, like, hidden it, at the bottom of his yeah. closet somewhere. I don't know. That part could be easily explained to me. But there was actually an FBI agent already keeping an eye on John. Um, his name was Robert wrestler um he was already like that kind of sounds familiar keeping i think he's done a lot of uh, different cases and i'm looking him up um he had already kind of been keeping an eye on him because he was pretty sure that woman that went missing across the street you know in his neighborhood in virginia in fairfax county he was like confident he was 100 percent sure i'm stupid the name sounds familiar because he played a significant, it says Wikipedia, says he played a significant role in psychologically profiling violent offenders in the 70s and is often credited with coining the term serial killer. And he's done like a ton of like serial killer, serial murder books and lectures in criminology. Hmm. So that's why his name sounds familiar. Hmm. Didn't even put that together. We're really bad true crime people right now. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, when I was doing my research, they said he had done a lot of work, so yeah. I, was, I just didn't know that know. much. Anyways. But he was, like, Robert Ressler was pretty convinced that he, that John killed the woman in Virginia, his neighbor. Like, he was pretty like confident. he knew it. He knew it. He, they couldn't prove it. They still, to this day, can't prove it. But, yeah. Because there was also people missing in his hometown in Pennsylvania. And where he went to college in Ohio. And where he got his bachelor's degree, degree in uh, Virginia. So, it's just, like, a lot of coincidences. Just everywhere he went, people were dead. And now in Florida, he's kidnapped and attacked and assaulted this woman. So, Ressler actually flew down to Florida and led a second search of the Crutchley residence. Um, The first search honestly sucked. Like, I only told you guys about the debit credit cards and the jewelry, but there was so much more. Like, I don't think that, I just don't think they were really looking. Um... Uh, wrestler and his team because he brought a different team and i guess he basically said Flo- the florida the brevard county police department set so he brought his own team in <laughs> and they searched and um john had a collection of index cards so like think of the ones that we use in school like i mm-hmm. still used them in college yeah the little like buy whatever i'm not even gonna give pretend measurements Index like cards. Five by seven. It was like the medium sized ones. Oh. Like not not like the little tiny ones like you do. Three by five. Something like that. I don't know. I'm just but making yeah. stuff up. Um where he had written women's and there's a lot of them. Think about the deck cards. There's a lot of index cards with names. With women's names. Um and a list of things the women had done for him sexually. That's gross. So like their name um, their phone number, and then, like, what they did, how he liked... He basically graded them. Like, it was a report card. Was it, like, everything consensual? Like, was there consensual stuff mixed up in this? Or was it all non-consensual things? 
it was it all started consensual and they both talked to each other about what would happen but he would always push the boundary of it basically not being consensual okay like too far so basically he kept track of every person he ever slept with basically think of a masochist and there are people that have a masochist kink and can keep it in control but when a masochist takes it too far okay that was him Gotcha. He, sometimes he took it way too far like gotcha. drinking people's blood yeah that's kind of without gross. their approval like i'm sure there's people out there that do this and you know do what you want like we're very much safe place but this was not consensual this was not a safe place <laughs> um john actually wasn't on trial very long in fact there was not a trial for this dude oh okay that will probably make you even more like please what, don't tell me he got a deal i heck? hate deals mm. I hate deals. Oh, should I just stop now? No, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> um, he was arrested in November 1985. So, like, basically after they searched his home, mm-hmm. they arrested him. Like, he was arrested that night at 2.30 um, in the morning when they came to his home with their warrant, as they should. And in June 1986, so less than a year, he would take a plea bargain. Um, he would plead guilty to the sexual assault and the kidnapping um, of Julie, um, and if they would drop the bodily harm, and bodily harm in this case meant he would admit to the assault and the kidnap, but he did not admit to the drinking of her blood. I wish y'all could see me shaking my head. Okay, and this is where Crystal was asking about the blood drinking and stuff. He said they shouldn't arrest him for that because he never got to drink her blood because it coagulated before he got the chance. Which is what blood does, people. Unless you're, like, getting it from the tap. That sounded very mean to say about a human being. So he wanted to drink warm, Warm, liquidy blood, not cold chunky blood that's just gross so, all around these people yeah. are nasty this so, man is going up there with the butthole eating guy oh my god they, they should be best friends anyways um yeah so he never actually drank all that so he basically took half her blood for nothing because he said he didn't get to drink it because it was too coagulated and he ended up dumping it out where did he dump it in I the backyard know. like i don't I don't know. Um, honestly, I'm glad I didn't find much on his wife. And I told Crystal to get ready for this part, too. I said, you're going to love his second wife. Um, I'm honestly glad I didn't find much on her because she was a real catch. And I'm pretty sure she knew what he was doing. I, I'm fully convinced she knew how he felt and what he was doing to women. There's no way. Um, it. Uh, she told reporters, like, after the sentencing, like, he didn't have a trial that he, if you don't have a trial, you basically go to the court and, and in front they of... They just send in to you. Yeah, in front of everybody, they just... Or sometimes you don't even have to go to the courthouse. But he did. He went to the courthouse, and they basically told him what he was getting, you know. And after his wife, I guess, went outside, because you know there's always vultures mm-hmm. outside waiting to get... Let's hear from, you know, Mrs. Crutchley. What do you have to say? Yeah. Um, and she told reporters after the sentencing that the attack on Julie was a gentle rape. <laughs> I wish y'all could see my face. Like, oh, a a gentle rape. Was it a, a gentle? Was, yeah, rape. It was a gentle rape, and he's a kinky sort of guy. That is her in quote. Uh, Ma'am, there is a difference between being into like what is it? Consent, non-consent. Mm-hmm. And having, like, a rape kink, I guess. Because there are people that like that. And that's and, between you and Jesus. And whoever you're doing, you're doing it, with. it with. Yeah. But, sir, there's no such thing as a... Or, Gen- ma'am, there's no such thing as a gentle rape. But, yeah. <sighs> Who says that? Apparently she does. Mystery woman. Who cares? We don't care about her. Um, but during the sentencing, he explained a little... Like, this is, like, the only... Like, he never really sat down with anybody and did it. Well probably the person that did the book and that's Mm -hmm. why i really want to read it Mm because i'm wondering if he sat down with him Mm -hmm. but there was nothing else on record of him like talking with people but during its sentencing sentencing is when he opened up 
that um, his desire to like drink blood and like the erotic part of it um, started in the early 70s after his divorce from Maud, his first wife. Oh, sweet Maud. Um, he started sleeping with a nurse um, in town. Oh, so he should cheat her too. No, this was after. Oh, they were okay. divorced. Okay, okay. I guess probably like, you know, you're. You're divorced and you're lonely and you have all these feelings and stuff. And he started, you know, sleeping with a nurse. Um, and during sex, she would have John drink blood. No. Like, she brought it up. She was like, I, no. have, I have this ritual. I think that's why he, when I was saying we'll talk about it, I think that's why he describes it as a ritual. Because she started him on it and she... Describe it to him as well, a ritual. Well, who is this lady who's getting blood and drinking it? Not much info on her. He just said that she was a nurse. He didn't even specify what hospital. Uh, probably rightfully so, you know. But, yeah. Uh, anyways. Also, this is really scary to think that there were nurses in the 70s and maybe even today, y'all. Stealing, bro- stealing blood from the hospital to drink it. That is gross. Before you have sex. Mm. I mean, because I'm assuming... That is gross. I'm assuming she stole it from the hospital. What did she do? Like, cover her body in the blood and he had to, like... No, they just drank it. Oh, so it was just, like, a casual, like, here's a glass of blood. They would, like, drink it, have sex, and then drink a little more after sex. You know how some people smoke, like, a cigarette or whatever? They drink blood. (laughs) I'm assuming... She got it from the hospital. I would like to think she didn't kill somebody and that's how it started, but... Yeah, y'all, this is where I really want to buy the book. And I already told Crystal uh, it's probably going to be downloaded tonight. Um, but, yeah, that he that's when he opened up and said that he shouldn't be charged for drinking her blood bodily harm. Because he never got the chance to because her blood didn't do what he wanted to. Which lets me know he's done that before. Because if you know how blood reacts and you've done that to several, you've done it to several people. I was looking to see if this guy was dead or not. Or something, or maybe she had a disorder that made her blood clot faster, or thicken, mm-hmm. or I don't know. Anyways, um, John Brennan Crutchley was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison with 50 years of parole, which is, like... That's a long time. That's a long time, but at that point, he was in his, like, late 40s. He was born in 1946. This was... I'm sorry, he was 40. This is 1986, so yeah, he was 40, and I mean, he wasn't really, you're not thinking that he was going to get out of jail alive, but I have no idea why they did this. Um, They actually did an interview with the people that said they gave him the deal, and to this day, they deny, and they said they never offered him this deal, so where did the deal come from? I don't know why. That's weird. I don't know why it's so secret, but yeah. Um... And this is really what I want to know and why they did this. But in 1996, so after serving 11 years, it actually wasn't 11 years exactly. It was like 10 years and 10 months. Um, John was released for good behavior. Like he didn't have to serve his 25 years. He got out in 11. That is disgusting. Mm-hmm. I want to assume because they never technically got him for murder. Mm-hmm. They were just kidnapping and stuff, so it's like a lesser charge. But he was basically pinpointed for over 30 murders. Jesus. In total. You like, know who he reminds me? This reminds me of, though, like I was telling you before, the tw- the toy box killer where they never got him they never on found any the bodies. bodies like mm-hmm. any people it was just all see that's they found the bodies but they never found any evidence yeah like no fingerprints no hair no dna no nothing no anything i feel like the credit cards and debit cards and the jewelry and all that stuff and the drinking of the blood and kidnapping julie would be enough but yeah over 30 women Ranging from Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, Washington, D.C., um, Florida. Mm-hmm. Like, he kept doing it. So, like, from the 70s to late 80s, they believe he killed up to 30 women. That's insanity. Like, to this day, the FBI have him down as the killer, but they technically couldn't. That's insane. But, yeah. Um. So, yeah. So, he served 11 years. 
Um, and he had to be released to someone. I don't know if you guys know how that works. So, like, if somebody's released to prison, you can't just, like, go somewhere by yourself. You have to be released to someone. You're basically considered a child, in a way. <laughs> like, you need a guardian. Like, and his mom was still alive. I believe his dad passed. His mom was still alive, and she still lived up north, and she said she didn't want him. <laughs> she said, no, he's not allowed to come live with me. Um, obviously, his wife and child moved on, and he didn't really have anybody else. And nobody would claim him. No family, no friends, no nothing, rightfully so. Um, so they sent him to the Orlando Probation and Restitution Center. Um, it's basically like a halfway house where you can, like, serve your probation and Mm -hmm. they have they have like uh po's there that you can just go and check in with daily or whatever they're right there and they have like programs where you can like basically real rehabilitate that's a hard one to say yourself but yeah because he still had to serve about 50 years of probation she like he was out like he served his 11 years but he basically was gonna basically was gonna be um, on probation for the rest of his life, which is crazy. Because, I mean, he's... What, at that time, he was in his late 50s. So, till he died, basically. basically. Um, and the very next day, so he was released, and then the very, like, less than 24 hours later, he was arrested again, because apparently the other people at the halfway house uh, threw him a release party. No, they did not. Yeah, I don't... <sighs> anyway. <laughs> and no, anyway, they throw they threw him in a release him party and apparently he smoked some marijuana um and they're gonna drug test you so they drug tested him and he popped positive for marijuana and the judge said that was a strike and threw him back in jail <laughs> so he had less, less than, than 24, 24 hours. hours of freedom the funny thing is is he said he never admitted to smoking it like you're a grown man and you've been in jail for 11 years like just admit it he said that the other inmates were smoking and he got second hand that's hilariously yeah. dumb yeah yeah um so nothing good comes from it and on march 30th 2002 like remember he went back to prison mm-hmm. and was serving his time um he actually died in prison <laughs> They originally... I, had to, I don't know why I'm laughing. I like had it. to open my phone because I had a, a thing pulled up because I want to make sure I say it right. He, at first, was declared uh, dead by asphyxiation because I feel like they didn't want to, like, admit to inmates getting certain stuff in their cells. Mm-hmm. Um, but he actually died from erotic asphyxiation. He somehow he is one kinky Yeah, he somehow person. got he somehow got a, a like a plastic bag like if you go to Walmart, which mm-hmm. I don't know why they would let you can easily kill somebody with a plastic bag. It's really scary to think that you can kill somebody with a plastic bag. Um but yeah, he put a plastic bag over his head, did the do and I guess did the do too long <laughs> and died. This case has made me laugh in way two, more than in 2002. It so he's been dead a good while. Oh, but yeah, Lord. So he was in prison like what, almost ten more years? Because he got out in 1996, died 2002. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He was so, in there another ten years. So yeah, that is what we have for today's episode. It was a wild ride. I told you, you guys were not gonna like the ending. I don't mean to laugh. I know me and Crystal are I'm laughing. dying. I, I may be just the horrible person because I'm not laughing at these poor women who... No. And all these poor people who are dead because of him. I'm laughing. He just was, because me- he was just a messed up dude. He is weird. He's a messed up... He had way too many kinks and the kinks just wouldn't let him live life. Literally. Like, dude ended made his some life. really crappy choices. It wasn't the kinks controlling him. It's just this man. Yeah, just bad person in general. But yeah, that's what. <laughs> yeah, that was a suggested episode. We powered through Thank it. Thank you, Danielle. It was interesting to research. Um, not how everybody wants it to end, but that's how it's gonna end, y'all. I'm sorry. Maybe later. Um, we were talking before. Um, we came up to the studio because a lot of other cases we've done later. They've actually, like, tested DNA, and some of the people, you know, were said to be the killer. So maybe later down on the road when they find more bodies or maybe can test something, he can be... I mean, he's already passed away, but maybe some of the families can get some closures. 
if some of them are still alive because this was like early 60s 70s and yeah. 80s so i don't know that's that's what i have for y'all today um i don't know you want to add anything else before we um we don't make this too long for y'all to i was thinking this was going to be a shorter episode i i was wrong don't think i have anything else other than to tell people you might want to go watch like a cute episode of a cartoon after mm. this like go do yourself a favor and turn on jimmy neutron i don't know why that's like my go-to show when i need to like a pick me up my go-to is bob's burgers oh, see i go to kids i go to kids stuff because it's bob's bob's anime. burgers is the best animated show and i'll fight anybody on that oh yeah we uh we're still in the process of trying to convince Bethany. I don't think we need to convince her, but she needs to get a full Bob's Burgers sleeve of tattoos. <laughs> That'd be the funniest I, thing ever. Yeah, I've been want. Yeah, we're, um, more tattoos are in the future. Yeah. Well, we're gonna let Taps play you out. Yeah. So you can hear it. That's our good night sign. It's it's nine o'clock our time recording this episode. You guys are listening to this on a Sunday on Halloween, probably. If you don't even listen to it that first day, it might be in November when you listen to this. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we really appreciate each and every download and listen and suggested episode just like this one, even though sometimes it's a little weird. But, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Have a good night. Bye. Oh, my God, we ended right when Taps did. That was <laughs> uncanny. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. Okay, export. No, I figured we could. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about Twitch She's for a second. She's wanting to head out on y'all. I forgot that Twitch was here. Sorry. We get too much into recording the episode. We're still getting used to doing it on Twitch at the same time. I think this is what, our second time doing this. Yeah. Second time. Alrighty, we don't want to make this too much longer. Um, oh, God. Yeah, Stephanie, she just texted me and said that um, her phone was messing up Twitch. Well, even though you missed it, you'll be able to listen to the episode on Halloween because it was our Halloween episode. Or you can just, when we end this, you can rewatch oh, it. Oh, yeah, you can rewatch it. You can it. rewatch it. Or I'm going to put it on YouTube. YouTube people are going to love this one. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a blast. be a blast. The only thing that everyone else missed was we talked about... Our Patreon. Oh, yeah, we talked about our Patreon. Um, and the fact that we have that, our episode on Sunday, we'll have some info about it. Um, oh, I didn't talk about our contest, but we were, and didn't mean, really need to, because we picked the winner for our contest when this episode goes live on, like, Spotify and stuff. Um, but we'll have a contest starting ASAP, as soon as I can put the stuff up, and it's a giveaway for a free shirt. And a set of four chocolate chip cookies from Basic Batches Cookies. Mm. So, mm. I'm excited for that. I'm going to order some. I know. Oh, and they have a, I was going to tell everybody, shouting out her Halloween stuff. You can pre-order it now. Or you can get it when it drops on the 18th, I think it is, or something like that. But it's a set of four cookies, and they come in, like, this special Halloween-themed box that you can use as decoration later on. So. That's pretty cool. I know. I think I'm just going to pre-order it and gamble at what cookie types it is. Because I've tried every single cookie she's had, and they're all delicious. They look so good. Gosh, they're so amazing. Anyway, that was all we really had. But, yeah, you can replay this. It should be up on, when we say at least, it's on Twitch for, like, three weeks. No, it's like a week, oh, if a that. Week. Yeah, because every time I try to go back after a couple of days, it's never there. I feel like our, our other episode's still up or was up. I don't know. But, yeah, you guys, if you want to replay it, you can. But, like Crystal said, it's going to go up on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And I'm more than likely going to download this tonight so we can get it up for YouTube so people can do whatever they want to do over on there. Um, love us or hate us or neither. But, yeah. I don't have anything else to add. You got anything else to add? Um, no. And I don't want to make this too much later because this lady uh, works early in the morning. Mom. No, I'll be honest. I'd be at work at 8 o'clock. You know what time I'll wake up? 7.50. Exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. I wake up, I change clothes, 
I use the bathroom, I brush my teeth, I get a protein shake, and then I go sit down at my desk. <laughs> it's so lazy. It's so lazy. Oh, All right, well, thank you guys so much for coming and hopping in with us. I know tonight's episode was a little weird. We didn't announce it like we normally do. Um, just been a busy week and just getting And everything. we didn't know what time we were going to Yeah, start. we didn't know and just life. Life, yeah. Life. But, we'll, but we're ahead and we're now. Ahead. The fact that we recorded this means that we're ahead. We're ahead and we'll do better and the next time, next week, I'm more than sure we're recording. We will let you guys know if we stream on here so we can maybe have a time for y'all. No, the next. The next stream we do is Sunday after next when yes. we do our actual Twitch That's stream. Right, we're doing Ouija boards on the twenty fourth, eight p.m. Central. That time we do know. Yeah, it's a Sunday, so, so we do know yeah. that one. Alrighty, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Y'all have a good night. Um, it's almost the weekend, Woo-hoo! so yeah, we'll see y'all on the twenty fourth. Bye.